Animal workers. Did you um did you go to any other places uh, besides the, the the tiger farm? Uh yeah, actually they had a whole array of special animal farms. They had a crocodile farm, they had a snake farm, and uh, they also had an elephant farm. And I went to the elephant farm or ranch or whatever it was called. Right, um, you know, could you tell me about that? I mean, how were the the, the elephants treated? How, how was the how was the experience? Actually, to be honest, I was surprised. I felt sorry for the elephants. Uh, I didn't really feel that sorry for the tigers, oddly enough, um, probably because they just lie around and sleep. But the mm. elephants, you know, they kind of have to work. I mean, right. it's definite work. They're put to work. And even though they've been doing this for years, for some reason, it just seems strange. Like they had a lot of the elephants chained to to poles, you know, so they couldn't get away. Right. And you have to figure if you're chained inside, yeah. you know, <laughs> that's kind of nature's way of saying that you want to go someplace else. Yeah. So, yeah, um, yeah I did feel sorry for them. And but you know, they're they're really cute. Like you ride on the elephant, and then they give you, you know, these the sugar cane. It's really cheesy. It's really commercialized, mm, and they mm. take you along this trail, and then every now and then you can buy the sugar cane and feed it to the elephant, and then the elephant does some little trick to show you that he's thankful. Mm. But it does seem pretty un- unnatural. Yeah, I guess so. I mean, yeah, it seems unnatural, a little bit like forced. Um, and, you know, I guess it's kind of easy to be cynical about it, but Essentially, we're talking about, you know, these, these animals, they're making money. Right. Um, so, again, we're back to the kind of ethical or moral kind of uh, point, you know. Um, and uh, I guess elephants are cute and elephants have this, um, you know, we have this curiosity about elephants. Um, so, you know... Um, well, I, one thing that I thought was interesting is that when you do this trip, like the first part of the trip, you're on an elephant, and then mm. eventually you get off the elephant, and they put you on an ox cart, an ox pulled cart, yeah. and then you later on you're like on a bamboo raft. Um, but you know, when you're sitting on the ox cart and you're going along, it, it dawned on me that you don't feel sorry for the ox. Right. That's you know? interesting. Yeah. You know, like I had a connection with the elephant, I kind of felt a little bit guilty, yeah. but the ox. Like nobody has any connection to it at all. It's just like, yeah, that's your job. You've been doing it for hundreds, thousands of years. Mm. So you know, so maybe that's it. Like the elephant, maybe in a thousand years, um, people wouldn't even feel sorry for the elephant. It would just be taken for granted. Well, maybe, yeah. I mean, I guess, like you say, we've used uh, the ox over over time for for farming and such like. So they've kind of been uh, for, been bred. That's been their role. Um, Whereas I guess elephants do have that that power, but um, I, I, I don't know. It's it seems a little bit skewed, like that you feel sorry for the for the elephant, but you don't feel sorry for the ox. Like I, I mean, sure. Like why why do we have this kind of you know categorization where where like some animals we feel you know kind of uh, some more more of an emotional connection with than than others? It it seems it seems odd to me. Yeah, it does make you wonder. A whole array. A whole array. They have a whole array of animal farms. The phrase a whole array means a wide variety. Notice the following. 1. The resort has available a whole array of water sports. 2. Regulating animal farms provides a whole array of problems. Nature's way of saying. Nature's way of saying. It's nature's way of saying. The phrase, nature's way of saying, is an idiom we use to describe the negative effects humans sometimes have on the environment. Notice the following. 1. Global warming is nature's way of saying we have a problem. 2. Japan's 2011 nuclear disaster may be nature's way of saying we should rethink our energy sources. Cheesy. Cheesy. This thing is cheesy. Cheesy describes something old and silly we've seen so often that it is no longer interesting. Notice the following. 
One. The movie had a cheesy ending. Two. I thought the elephant show was cheesy. Connection. Connection. I had a connection. When we have a connection with someone or something, that means we feel an emotional link. Notice the following. One. While diving, I felt a connection with the dolphins. Two. I love dogs, but feel no connection with cats. Skewed. Skewed. It seems skewed. Here, the word skewed means something that, for an unknown reason, doesn't seem correct or fair. Notice the following. One, the animal shows really skewed my opinion of Thailand. Two, his opinion seemed a bit skewed. Scary food. One interesting thing、uh, for me is that you know, over recent years we've had countless、uh, incidents where、um, cattle and、uh, animal stock have become、um, diseased, and they've had to be culled、uh, on. You know, they've had to be killed to to, to stop the disease.、Um, I think you know that's also kind of、uh, a very important issue.、Um, why why are they why are these animals becoming so so diseased? Is it A sort of a sign that we're doing something wrong.、Um, what do you think about that? Yeah, I mean that's a scary one.、Uh, I've lived in quite a few countries over the years, and every country that I've lived in has always been paranoid about the mad cow disease.、Mm. So even in England, I lived in your country in England about seventeen years ago, and、mm. there was concerns about it then. It was first propping up,、mm. um, and then、uh, you know in Asia now, all the Asian countries are worried about it.、Mm. Um, To be honest, I don't even give it any thought.、Mm. You know, I mean, I hear about there's high levels of mercury in salmon. You shouldn't、mm. eat too much salmon.、Mm. Uh, you have to worry about mad cow disease if you、mm. eat beef.、Mm. Um, I think you have to worry about other diseases with with chicken.、Mm. You know, they had the bird flu a little、mm. while ago. Mm. So, mm.、Um, yeah, I just I don't know. I don't know what to think really. Yeah, I mean, it hasn't changed my eating patterns. Has it changed your eating patterns? Um. No, not particularly.、Um, I have to say that I do still eat meat.、Uh, I had grilled chicken yesterday, and so you know,、um, like I said, it's very difficult to be、um, all kind of、uh, morally、um, high when、um, you eat animals. One interesting thing is about、uh, animals that we select for captivity. Like you know, if they're not cute. Or、uh, <laughs> right. you know, it's, it's like it seems to be like it's the only the, the cute animals in the world that we care about. Right.、Uh, you know, what about the ugly ones?、Uh, right. And this kind of gives you kind of it's a bit warped, isn't it? It's not really truly kind of、um, you know、uh, representative of the animal kingdom.、Um, and there's definitely a bias towards. Animals, let's say, than versus insects. You don't hear about people like crusading against to save insects, cockroaches. That's or, right. Yeah. Centipedes, spiders, whatever. And yeah, technically, that's a life form as well, right? Yeah. No. You know, insects.、Um, they, you know, within ecosystems, they 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 carry out very、uh, key roles. You know. Right. Um, yeah, we we're we're not fascinated with insects. In fact, most people.、Um, Have some sort of、uh, kind of、uh, repulsion towards insects, right?、Um, so yeah, it's again. I guess it's kind of like、uh, we we choose to kind of make this kind of、uh, Disney Disneyland of like animals of you know we have curiosity about、uh, the cute ones and the you know、uh, the ones that are able to do tricks and stuff. But you know, <laughs> you know what about the other guys? You know. <laughs> Fair enough, man. Good point. Culled. Culled. The animals have to be culled. Cull means to kill some animals to stop disease or to control the population. Notice the following. One. In two thousand and eight. Huge numbers of chickens were culled to stop the spread of the avian flu. Two, 
Culling is controversial in many countries. Paranoid. Paranoid. Paranoid about disease. Paranoid describes an unreasonable belief that someone or something is going to harm you. Notice the following. 1. When I travel, I'm always paranoid about drinking the water. 2. He's really paranoid about eating street food. Give it a thought. Give it a thought. I don't even give it a thought. To give something a thought means to think about it. Notice the following. 1. I never gave it a second thought. 2. Give it some thought and let me know by tomorrow. Eating patterns. Eating patterns. These concerns haven't changed my eating patterns. The term eating patterns describes what we usually eat. Notice the following. 1. My eating patterns have never changed. 2. The doctor ordered him to change his eating patterns. Warped. Warped. It's a bit warped. Warped ideas are thoughts and opinions that most people think are not normal. Notice the following. 1. His idea of a healthy diet seems a bit warped. 2. After reading my short story, our English teacher said I had a warped mind. Love at first sight. So, do you believe in love at first sight? Um, I think it, I think it does exist. Um, I think you can have a sort of a spark mm. at first sight, but I, what I consider as love, is a bit different to what that first kind of meeting would be. Mm. If you can have something like, and then you think that person has a real possibility, I think that's what you mean by love at first sight. But you can't instantly love someone. It takes growth. It takes coming together, um, shared experiences, that sort of stuff. But, you know, I think for some people, my parents actually met uh, at a guitar concert and um, it was a total mistake. They thought that, <laughs> no, seriously, it was a total mistake. They thought that each other was in the same group um, and it turned out they were on separate groups. Um, and then things went from there. He proposed after five weeks. Wow. Um, and actually had to, and he proposed in front of the fax machine <laughs> while his divorce was being finalized. Oh, my God. <laughs> to his first wife. What so, a romantic story. So, yeah, and 20 years later, you know, so it, it took one conversation in a, in a guitar concert. So if I've seen it, you know, I guess that spark definitely exists in them. I guess if you call it attraction at first sight, it's way more fitting. Yeah. Definitely. That's what I feel at least. I've yeah. seen, I have friends who experienced, like one of my friends on my university now, she experienced love at first sight. Like she saw the guy and she thought, that's the guy I want to marry. So I never tried anything like that, but I heard, I heard it happen and I see it happening now because she's still way head over, head over heels for this guy. I think if you decide person you're going to marry when you see them you're a little bit insane like well insanity is a good point <laughs> i suppose she is a little bit insane yeah she had a very sad love story beforehand a guy she was in love with for two and a half years who did who knew but he didn't he i think he they actually did date a little but he didn't want to be serious about it yeah um so i guess she's more she she wants it to be serious but I never tried, like, I think the people I've been in love with, has, it has taken time. It has taken, like, at least half a year before I felt that there was more. Yeah. Like, I could, have be, I could be attracted to them, but the love part, the really wanting to be with this person came later because I didn't want to take, I didn't want to get serious at le immediately. Yeah, I think after that sort of six-month puppy love stage, you know, and it's so like new and exciting and you're learning all about the other person. That's when it starts to get like, mm. I think, you know, you start to feel the, the stress. But I mean, also like if, if I even, it, there was a guy I didn't even date, mm -hmm. but we were talking together for half a year. And when we met, because it was internet and I, he was, he was in Holland and I was in Denmark. So we met after half a year, we first met on a trip. So we met and it was, 
and then I could feel it grow. But it took me half a year to slowly and safely just get to the point where I could actually feel something. It didn't work out, but oh, well, what can you do? <laughs> yeah, I tried. Spark. Spark. I think you have a spark at first sight. When you feel a spark with someone, you feel an intense attraction to that person soon after meeting them. Notice the following. One. I thought that she was attractive, but I didn't feel much of a spark. Two. The beginning of our relationship was filled with sparks. At first sight. At first sight. Do you believe in love at first sight? At first sight refers to the first time you see something or someone. Notice the following. One. I fell in love with him at first sight. Two. Although they were only eight, it was basically love at first sight. Head over heels. Head over heels. She's still way head over heels for this guy. If you are head over heels for someone, it means that you are crazy in love with that person. Notice the following. One, she is completely head over heels for this guy. Two, he falls head over heels very quickly. Proposed. Proposed. He proposed after five weeks. When a man proposes to a woman, he asks her to marry him and be his wife. Notice the following. One. He proposed to her next to a waterfall. Two. She was expecting him to propose to her at Christmas. Puppy love. Puppy love. We are at that puppy love stage where it's so new and exciting. Puppy love is also used to refer to how two people feel about each other at the beginning of a relationship. Notice the following. One, they are only 14 years old, so it's nothing but puppy love. Two, everyone thought their relationship was just puppy love, but they ended up getting married. Insanity. Insanity. Well, insanity is a good point. Insanity is another word for craziness. Notice the following. Number one. It is just insanity to have three jobs at once. Two. Twenty little kids in one house is basically insanity. Long distance relationships. So how do you feel about long distance relationships? Not that good. I had I had two relationships by now, and both of them ended after me going somewhere. First time I was in Denmark, but in like I live on a school in another city, and um, and while I was there for four months, like I think two months after, I went home to him and broke up, and then came back to the school and just didn't really care. And then the second time I went traveling, and I missed him so much, and I came back and realized that there was nothing left. I lost everything while I was away. So I don't, after one month, after two months, I think that I, it just doesn't, doesn't work for me if it's not really special. Yeah, I guess you're, you're kind of like me. Like I have to see the person. Exactly. Almost a, you know, daily. Exactly. And you can, you can have conversations online and on the phone, but if there's no, I don't know, it doesn't have to be much, just like, be close, see each other in the eye, see each other in the eye. Like mm. it's a big difference. Yeah, I did a, a month when I went home to Australia. Um, a while summer. Later. Yeah, yeah, this recent summer, mm. and like Skype is just not enough. Oh. Do you know what I mean? Like I you can see the mean. person, you can talk to them. You know, you, you can kiss the camera if you want, but <laughs> you, it's if not you the, want. You know, it's it's not the same. Um, but that's not to say I don't think some people can do it. I figure if it's a very, like, if the relationship is very, um, 
it's very passionate or as you've been going on for a long time because both of my relationships was under one year, I think. The first one was one year and the second one was half a year. So if we're used to staying together, then I think you can work it out. I'm just too impatient. Yeah, I guess under a year you haven't really learnt to depend on the other person. Exactly. You're still time. going by the passion if and if you can't see the person every day or like mm. whenever you want, mm. then the passion just slowly fades. Mm. Yeah, yeah, agreed. But this is your first relationship, right? Yes, it is. And I did one month when I went home away from the person. And, it and was that's just... the first time you ever went away from the person? Yeah, and it was just... <laughs> oh, horrible. Horrible, 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 horrible. horrible. But... I remember the first time I like I traveled while my boyfriend was still at home. Mm -hmm. And it was a week and I was devastated. Yeah. So... It's <laughs> if it's mm. passionate, it's, it's impossible. Well, well, I did Christmas away from them when I went to Christmas. I did India for mm. Christmas last year, oh, okay. and two weeks was was bad enough. And then a month, and I was just pulling my hair out. Do you know? Mm -hmm. So mm. yeah, it's hard. It yeah, it certainly is. Under a year. Under a year. Under a year, you haven't really learned to depend on the other person. In this case, under means less than. Notice the following. One. The whole process will take under a month. Two. He will be back to work in under a week. In the eye. In the eye. Look the other person in the eye. When you look at someone in the eye, you make eye contact with them. They are looking at you and you are looking at them. Notice the following. 1. I hate talking on the phone because I can't look the other person in the eye. 2. Look me in the eye and tell me how you feel. Passion. Passion. Then the passion slowly fades. Passion is a strong feeling of desire or love. Notice the following. 1. Most relationships have a lot of passion at the beginning. 2. We both have a lot of passion for our careers. Devastated. Devastated. It was a week and I was devastated. If you are devastated, you are overwhelmed with sadness or disappointment. Notice the following. 1. He didn't get the job that he wanted and was completely devastated. 2. She was completely devastated when her team lost the game. Pulling my hair out. Pulling my hair out. I was just pulling my hair out. You pull your hair out when you feel really frustrated. Notice the following. 1. If you spend too much time with him, you will want to pull your hair out. 2. Sitting in traffic when I'm in a hurry makes me want to pull my hair out. Economics in Australia So, Alex, you're from Australia. What's the economical situation there at the moment? We've actually been uh, very, very lucky in the last couple of years uh, throughout the global financial crisis. We've been uh, – we've had very strong, very positive economic situation. Um, the, the reason behind that is mainly because of China. They've been buying a lot of our export commodities, um, and as a result, it's been fueling the economy. We didn't have a recession, unlike the United States. Um, um, because of the stimulus package uh, as well as China. So the government did a very controversial stimulus package, which included raising the, le the, the retirement age up to 67. So that was something that wasn't really very much liked. It actually got the prime minister booted out of office. Um, but nevertheless, as a result, a lot of these things that, that the government did helped a lot. 
we also have this thing that I think is one of the most exciting you know, things that are to, come, to come out of Australia, which is superannuation uh, or superannuation, however you want to say it. It's uh, a sort of mandatory 11% on top of your income, which by law uh, you must put into a savings account, which is then invested. Uh, these The investment packages you can actually get um, are... You know, it can be divided between property, between shares, between stock, whatever you want. You can manage it yourself or you can have it managed as well. But the law is you cannot take the money out until you are 65. So if you think about this, you know, that's 11% of what every single person is earning. Often families pool their superannuation together, their super. And that's all being invested. It's all being pumped throughout the economy constantly. Um, yes, it's being kind of pulled out of, out of services and so on and so forth, but it's, it's going through, it's providing developmental um, initiatives and all sorts of stuff like that. So it's, I think that's one of the reasons I, I certainly think that we're going to have better standards of living than our parents will, unlike so many countries in the world, which will just fall flat because they haven't got the, the, the structure, the, the social and uh, the economic architecture to look after themselves in the mm -hmm. next couple of years. Crisis. Crisis. Throughout the global financial crisis, used like this, Crisis refers to a period of financial problems or instability. Notice the following. 1. The city wasn't prepared for an environmental crisis like this. 2. He does a very good job staying calm in a crisis. Commodities. Commodities. They've been buying a lot of our export commodities. A commodity is a valuable item that can be traded or sold. Notice the following. 1. His company ships commodities around the world. 2. Her job involves looking for new and exciting international commodities. Recession. Recession. We didn't have a recession, unlike the United States. A recession is a temporary decline in economic activities. Notice the following. 1. It is a horrible time to look for work now because of the recession. 2. Many people have lost their jobs during the recession. Stimulus package. Stimulus package. Because of the stimulus package, the company survived. A stimulus package is used to help the economy create jobs or increase spending. Notice the following. 1. Everyone will be getting a tax rebate this year as part of a national stimulus package. 2. The government is proposing a stimulus package as part of their effort to help the economy. Superannuation. Superannuation. Often, families pool their superannuation together. A superannuation is an amount that is regularly deducted from an employee's paycheck and invested in a plan used for retirement. Notice the following. 1. Most people hate superannuation when they are young, but love the benefits when they are older. 2. Does your country have a superannuation package? Stock. Stock. It can be divided between property, between shares, and between stock. In this case, stock refers to the shares or ownership of a company. Notice the following. 1. He put some of his money in savings and invests some of it in stock. 2. They are finally selling some of their stock to the public. Fall flat fall flat. The economies will fall flat because they haven't got good structure. In this example, fall flat is used to mean something similar to fail or collapse. Notice the following. 1. 
Their company will probably fall flat in a few years. Two, it takes a lot of hard work to keep a nation from falling flat. The economy for Europeans. So Maria, you've seen a lot of the stuff that's been happening recently in Europe,、uh, and you know that things have not exactly gone very well. What do you think are the? What's the outlook for Denmark in the future? Do you think you you guys will do well, or? I don't think we'll do that well, because I'm from a generation where we, like my generation, we had it very well. We had it very good. We uh, we could choose whatever job we wanted. We we can still choose whatever education we want if we're smart enough. At least we get paid from the government to study. Um, I get a lot of money every every month. I still do, even though I'm on exchange. Just to, just to study. So compared to other countries where it's a privilege to study, we just we just if we feel like it, we'll study and we might wait a little. And but now they're saying that we're this luxury generation that we're not used to working hard, and I can recognize that because I'm not used to working for anything.、Um, so we'll when we have to when we begin to struggle finding jobs because we have like a high rate of、uh, what's it called unemployment. Especially for young people, people who graduate usually they wait. If you if you don't have a very specific ed- education,、um, doctors I think are okay. People like that. But if you have a humanistic education, you might have to wait a year, more than a year to find a job. My sister is graduating now, and she is like dying because she is like a fear for that. She, when she graduates with her social European studies, she will have a very hard time finding anything. Um, so, I think the biggest problem is the is the personality of the Danish youth because we are not used to having to do anything, and now we have to because if environment has changed in Europe. I don't know economically because we still have a lot of like huge enterprises, and we have a lot of、um, we the, like the way we're placed. We have pretty good connections with America. And we're in Europe. <laughs> we have like a whole, all of Europe around, around us, and of course, we as a part of Scandinavia, we have good connections with. Like we have some more than just like connections with Sweden and Norway. We are like I don't know closer than we would have been, for example, Germany, which we we actually Denmark is situated on Germany, so we have we're linked to Germany, but we're still closer to Sweden. Um, so we we will probably manage, but. We will have to change economically, and it might be a problem that we're getting a socialist,、uh, socialist government at the moment. I think it's great because I I love it that we have it this way, but we might get in economic trouble、uh, difficulties.、Um, so I'm probably going to have a harder time than my parents. I it's going to work. It's going to help that I'm studying business, though, because I can always just work in another country. Australia, for example, but、uh, yeah, I don't know. Future is is vague. Yeah. Outlook. Outlook. What's the outlook for Denmark in the future? The outlook of something is a prediction about what will happen in the future. Notice the following: one, that computer company has been through some tough times this year, but the outlook is good for the future. Two, we had a very serious meeting regarding the outlook of our magazine publications. Generation. Generation. I'm from a generation where we had it very well. Your generation includes all of the people who were born around the same time as you. Notice the following: one, kids from my brother's generation are very good with electronics. Two, many women were housewives during my grandmother's generation. Struggle. Struggle. People began to struggle finding jobs. You struggle with something that is difficult to achieve or complete. Notice the following: one, I continued to struggle with math all year. Two, 
She struggled with being overweight for many years. Dying. Dying. My sister is like dying because she has a fear that when she graduates, she won't be able to find a job. When you are dying about something, you are really anxious, nervous, frustrated, or excited about it. Notice the following. One, I'm so scared for my interview that I feel like I'm dying inside. Two, she is always dying to have the latest fashions. Enterprises. Enterprises. We still have a lot of big enterprises. An enterprise can be a large organization or business. Notice the following. One. He has been very successful and now has an important position at a big enterprise. Two. This computer company has gone from being a small company to a large enterprise in only ten years. Vague. Vague. The future is vague. If something is vague, it is unclear or non-specific. Notice the following: one, I hate it when you give vague answers like that. Two, the directions about what to do next are kind of vague.